Steve Red is easy. Soccer. What the fuck? Dude, I can't take this lady on the We can bet on that too. What's the odds? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's insane. Welcome back to what's the odds? Welcome. I'm very smart. Welcome back to what's the odds? The odds. Welcome. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to What's the Odds. We got Steve on Skype. We got Emma in the booth, and Steve Lucas Hurl is back here with me. I love you guys. Thanks for helping me out again this week. Let me tell you something. Don't get it twisted. I like how you are. Welcome back to What's the Odds. And didn't say we until home because Steve, it, how's, it, how's your back doing? Show. How's your back doing, by the way? My back is doing better. I went to the hospital, and as soon as I landed, they they got me the right amount of medicine to get me back to Los Angeles, and I'm going to see a specialist to get an MRI on Monday. So That's good. I'm, I'm sure they will not find that the better, cause yeah. of it was from you carrying this show. So I wish you the best and look forward to you training again. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm, I'm like... What, what are the, I'm, I'm like, if I need surgery, what am I going to do? But I'll, I'll play <laughs> You're going to have to wheelchair a half bike. marathon. I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a baby that goes through a little bit of, of you know, adversity, gets hurt, and can't rehab myself. Like certain quarterbacks that decide to retire, by who, the way. Who are you talking if you, about? If you, are, if you are a person that shit on Andrew Luck, or be fun of him, or is calling him weak, then you, my friend, are a piece of shit, okay? Because he's 29 years old. He's taking n- numerous tr- hits that would end people's career, broken almost every bone in his body, and he realizes he doesn't want to do it anymore. He's $100 million in the bank. He's got a great family, and he can do whatever he wants for the rest of his life. He's got an architecture degree from Stanford, Okay? The guy's going to be fine. You do complaints about that? Shit bags that have gambling problems that want the best quarterbacks that you get out there. That's what's problems with us. Those are the people calling this guy weak. But for me, I look at him and I go, good for you, bro. You got your money. You did the best you could for nine years. You know, he tried to stay healthy. It wasn't a thing where he was out partying on boats or, you know. You know, I honestly think it was, like it's the uh, organization. The organization's to blame. I don't think they handled his injuries well. I don't think they, when he got hurt, they didn't analyze it properly. They didn't rehab him properly, and he never healed from everything. So I think he had Well, to, maybe that's why. Yeah, I think he had to yeah, blame the Colts. Yeah, that's why organizations are letting you keep $30 million. Yeah. When, when your organization, trust me, football owners want every nickel they can get. And if your organization says, you know what, you retired, and technically you owe us $20 million back the $35 million signing bonus we gave you, but we're going to let you keep it. That's them, you know, uh, trying to rectify their own guilt and not handling his injuries perfectly. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, no owners are, are going to give away free money ever. So I'm glad that he made the decision he made. I feel bad if he's in pain still, because I know that's another person in pain what it's like to have a bad injury and not be able to live a normal life. Are you tearing up, Steve? Are you Andrew? Re- look at- Are you retiring? From no, I'm just the desert race. <laughs> I'm not retiring. Like- no, I'm, reti- I'm not retiring. <laughs> but if I, I right now, I, I really couldn't even do stand up comedy because I can barely stand up. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'll fight through it because I don't have a hundred million dollars in the bank. But also, we are both prime athletes, and so I, that's why I can I understand where he's coming from. I understand how he feels. To be so good at something like I'm such a good athlete, and then not be able to perform to the level. I mean, he's he's young enough to be your kid, Steve. I I think you're at different stages of your career. My mom is telling me I have to retire from playing basketball because I'm not allowed anymore. And she wants to put a newspaper article out saying that anyone that plays with me is not allowed to. She doesn't want me playing basketball anymore. But you know what? She wasn't born left-handed, and with the God gift of a beautiful jump shot, I was. I was. It's okay. So it's an I okay shot. I've seen it. It's an okay shot. I mean, it's not Andrew. Brendan, it's more of a it's more of a Jacoby Brissett shot than an Andrew Luck shot. Situation there. I will ruin your life. 
I will kill you. And I'll embarrass you in front of all our fans. You know, don't talk shit about basketball with me. You, don't do it. Somebody's getting posterized. You know what shocks me about Andrew <laughs> Luck's retirement is football is his whole life. His dad is the commissioner of the XFL. So maybe he's yeah, just but, retiring but, and he's going to join the XFL. You don't think he's going to walk into an offensive <laughs> coordinator job, or you know, he he may not make you know two hundred million dollars for the rest of his career. But go look at uh, guys like uh, Shaq and guys like um, guys like uh, Charles Barkley. These guys that have probably made just as much post their careers because of. You know, uh, being a good announcer, being a good analyst, yeah. getting promotional deals, Shanks getting endorsements. For sure, and they, you know, they're making $10 million dollars a year without having to go get smashed up on the field. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather make $10 million a year and not get my body screwed up and make $25 million a year and roll the dice every time. Yeah. So he, he's I 29 agree. years I, old. I'm, I'm proud of him. I, I think he did the, the right move. And you know what it is? The reason why people are so upset is. It was uh, Adam, Sh- what's his name? Adam Schefter. Sh- Schefter? Schefter, yeah. Yeah, he, he leaked yeah, the story yeah. before Andrew wanted to tell people properly. Yeah, but I so get that. people were in the stadium looking at their phones, seeing the tweets, going, what the fuck? And then they started booing him. So the, the poor kid didn't I mean, have a chance. He wanted yeah, to have he, a press he, conference he, on Sunday yeah. and leave Schefter's football gracefully. Job because, look, dude, he, that's a big get. That's a real big oh, get, yeah. a real yeah, big yeah, story. Yeah. And so, you know, if you don't say it first, you're not the guy that got it. So mm-hmm. I, I think Chef is doing his job. I think in hindsight, he probably wishes he didn't do it the way he did because, you know, he didn't get, Andrew Luck didn't get a chance to say what he wanted to say. He didn't yeah. get to walk away the way he wanted to. And he got booed. That was terrible. Mm-hmm. That was absolutely terrible. Well, the reactions, though, that make me laugh are all the people in the fantasy football leagues that held drafts that night and then literally picked him. And then hours later, he retired. Go watch some of those videos. Can I say that losing him is if if that's like your biggest gripe for the season, then you're probably not going to win your league anyway. Because there's so many good quarterbacks that even yeah. Jacoby Brissett, he's not obviously going to put up Andrew Luck numbers, but you could get by with him a couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, and, and, and yeah, plenty you're of gonna have to there's about for a while. Unless, yeah, there's about twenty they're, they're quarterbacks that that could help you win a championship. Do you remember the whole suck yeah. for luck campaign? What? The whole suck for luck campaign in 2012 where the last no. place teams in the NFL they you know, I, I don't know if they intentionally tanked, but fans were rooting to suck for luck cuz everybody knew that Andrew Luck would be the first pick in the draft and that he's going to be a superstar. You know, I mean, he was so good yeah. that the Colts cut well, Peyton I mean, Manning. Yeah. Robert Griffin, you know, RG3 Neck and neck. I think RG three won the Heisman, but I think people were saying that you know the pedigree and the and the and the better arm strength. I think with 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 Luck. So I don't think it was like a Peyton Manning, Todd, um, what's his name, Ryan Lee situation. Lee. Whatever, whatever guys, Ryan Lee situation where you're going to go bust tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I don't even think Robert Griffin was a bust, but yeah, I thought Andrew Luck was a bona fide. You know, you got you got the pedigree of that that education, smarty family. It's like he gets. He gets it, and honestly, that's why I think he's he's making this decision right now because he knows he's got a brain. He knows he can make money, and and, and uh, he'll be fine. And so he wants to keep himself intact. Yeah, it, it seems know? like this like, is a weird new standard too. Remember, the Forty ers had two players retire: Clint Borland, who just made a Pro yeah. Bowl, and Patrick Willis, like the same year. Young guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, young guys. Which Wait, goes to my point again. Happen. I'll say it again. I don't think Ezekiel Elliott's going to fucking play him out, uh, down a football till he gets every nickel he thinks he deserves. You know, I'm I mean, a little nervous now about that. I still am fairly confident that he's going to sign before week one starts. I think Jerry Jones is going to come to his senses and pay the guy because he needs him to win a Super Bowl. Um, but the Giants will still lose badly, regardless of who's back there running the ball. But I, I still think, now I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm still like 75, 25 sure that he's going to sign before week one. It's been a little quiet the last few days. I don't days, think so, but, man. But the, I this don't think so. The story really is the rumors right. have been optimistic. You're, you're really optimistic, and it's going to backfire. I will, I will draft him. If I'm in the position to draft him, I'm saying it right now, I will draft him. 
I mean, in the first round, people keep asking me on Twitter. I, I, I mean, not on Twitter, by the way. You, know, <laughs> yeah, you don't have a Twitter. Yeah, on Instagram. Someone wrote me. I got the, I got the, uh, I think it was the 14th daily. I got the 12th pick in the first round. Should I go with, with Ezekiel Elliott? And I, I, I said, no. I said, look, Le'Veon Bell is, a, is an indicator, dude. Did you say 12th he pick went, in the first round? Yeah. Uh, if he falls to the 12th pick, you have to take. What are you doing yeah. to that poor guy? Are you kidding me? That's Dude, a I'm, steal. I'm, I'm, the 12th pick? You're going pick? to give up a first-round draft pick on a player that's not going to play a fucking 100% round, right? because even if he doesn't sign week one, he's going to sign week two. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? Because he's the best player on the field. And Jerry Jones is going to find that, that out go, very he quickly knows, when he's got you're, you're, the backup at Pollard right, in there. You're arguing against yourself. You're arguing against yourself. He also knows he's the best player on the field. So until they give him the money, they're going to give him the money. If he misses week one, they're going to give him the money. When they see what the alternative is, he's going to get paid. Jerry Jones said yesterday, he said, we don't need him until the playoffs. That's bullshit. I know. <laughs> that's just him. That's okay, just him being right, Jerry right, Jones. Right? We can look into a crystal ball, right? We're going to look into a crystal ball, hypothetically speaking, right? We know for a fact Ezekiel Elliott's going to come back week five. Do you pick up him in the first round? Absolutely. Five? Yeah. Are you going to him? Absolutely. Week yeah, he's five. that good. He's that good. The offense is built around him. It's a high-powered offense with a great line. Absolutely. I will figure it out for four weeks. Even if I went 0-4, I could still turn it around and win the rest of the season. All right, fine. What about week six? When, when, when is the value tip to not taking him in the first round? Six? I would still take him six. That gives me half the season. Yeah, and let me, let me tell you this. I had him uh, the year that he got suspended halfway through the season. The guy is the reason I made it to the playoffs because I basically put all my points on his back. And if I hadn't lost him to that bullshit suspension, I probably would have won that league. So absolutely I would take that guy. I would take whatever production yeah. he would give me because he's still going to finish top 10 whether he plays the whole season or not. I, I just I can't disagree with you enough. I think you need to value a first round draft pick. It's the value of someone you know that you can count on every 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 single week putting up numbers. It's not even a question. I'm putting this guy in unless there is a buy. This guy is fucking playing. That's it. That's what you expect out of a first round draft. Pick. I also think you got to take never chances. Pick a first round draft pick that you got to take some chances if you want to win. Game. What about Kareem Hunt? You going to pick up Kareem Hunt? Hunt? I am not games. not going to pick up Kareem Hunt. I don't like the situation in Cleveland because, I mean, we're looking at if Ezekiel Elliott plays, he is the guy. He's a three down back. He's getting at least twenty touches a game, and he's going to he's going to take advantage of those touches. Now with Chubb, Chubb's probably going to get a lot of work. He's going to be very good. But then Kareem Hunt comes back, and it's like if Chubb is killing it, are they going to give Kareem Hunt that much? They're obviously going to give him something, but they're not going to give him everything. And then it becomes a situation if you draft Chubb and and then Kareem Hunt comes back and they're like, okay, well, let's rest Chubb for the playoffs. You know, all of a sudden it's like, who who's going to get the work there? So that... Well, no, I, look, I, don't mind, I don't mind handcuffing myself to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, but I would never take Kareem Hunt in the first round. I take Nick Chubb in the first round knowing you're going to get more and then maybe Kareem Hunt goes in the five, six, seven, eight rounds, something like that. That makes sense to me. Is it crazy that... Elliott in the first round right now, under the assumption he's going to miss time. Look, I might be wrong. He may sign week one. Okay, mm-hmm. that's fine. If he signed week one, I'd say it's of course to take Ezekiel Elliott in the first round. But my instincts and my gut tell me he's not going to be ready week one, and I don't think he's going to be ready for the first four weeks of the season. I don't think he's going to be ready. I think that's that's pushing him, it, or they that's realize they maybe need him. and Jerry Jones. It's got a tremendous ego, and he thinks he doesn't need anyone. So <laughs> there you have it. But he's in Cabo, and he's in great shape right now, Steve. Yeah. He's That's working out said. in Mexico. I've been to Cabo twice. I've never been in great shape when I went down to Cabo. <laughs> yeah, I believe you called in drunk to the podcast once from Cabo. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I did. I was pretty hammered. Adam, you tell me, what do you think? you taking him first round? I am taking him first round. If he falls to the fourth picker later, he will be on my team. Absolutely. 
I agree with that. I would take him over most players who are under contract. Absolutely. In the first round. Because the other thing, too, is, Steve, there's there's risk to everything. What happens if you take Barkley? You have the first pick overall. You take Barkley. Yeah. And he, he gets way too much work and gets banged up, and he misses due to injury. I mean, it's no difference. Okay. That, 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 I understand. But at least I'm, I'm going under the assumption that, yes, injuries happen. Unforeseen injuries, things like that happen. But knowing that someone's going to miss this that's not unforeseen well we don't know that yet so i i'm willing to take that chance and take him not knowing if he's going to miss time or not and if he does he does i'll survive i'll survive i'm very good at this very good at fantasy football Um, i will survive i took a kicker in the first round on a dare and i still finished in the top three in points at the end of the season so the first round pick Definitely affects the outcome, but not entirely, because I took a fucking kicker. You could take Andrew Luck and exactly play the waiver wire route. Exactly. So I am willing to take a chance on Zeke, but I also think he's going to be back. He's, he's yeah, just, I don't he's know. Too valuable. Just, if it's an eight-man league, maybe fourteen-man makes a difference because you're not coming back around. You might not get another shot at him, but in an eight-man league, I am not taking. We're going to be a, uh, we're a 12 team yeah. league. 12 team. All right. Yeah. By the way, did you work out a trick? We got, I mean, I'm doing lights out with David Spade right at the exact same time. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm out to, uh, Aaron cause Emma's going to be on tour. So I'm out to Aaron and I don't think the podcast after us is even recording. So, um, to those of you, oh, uh, the invite went out already for the league. So please accept it. And we're probably going to do it at four fifteen or so whenever Steve is ready uh, live on the podcast, so we'll need you guys watching. If you're not in L.A. and can't be here, we're going to need you on Facebook to make your picks, and if you don't pick within a decent amount of time, you're going to get kickers, you're going to get Andrew Luck, Lamar Miller, <laughs> and uh, Jarek McKinnon, who I think is going to go on injury <laughs> reserve today. And they I'm still sending a proxy. Someone's going to come pick for me. Yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah. It'll be 4.15 um, yeah. Pacific time. The TV show and taping at like is three thirty, so I'll just run right over to the studio right there. Yeah. Well, probably um, not running. Wait. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be running. I'm going to be limping. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, look, I'm looking forward to it. I wanted to talk about one other um, football thing. Are you guys? Um, are you into uh, what's happening with um, with this whole hard knocks with the Brown? Like. Did he figure out his uh, his Antonio Brown? Like, is he playing football? Is he got a helmet now that he likes? Yeah, he's I got a helmet. I, I'm five minutes into the into last night's episode, and the first three minutes of it is him catching balls from a machine one-handed with his new helmet on, and then taking it off and complaining how tight it is. But he has a new helmet. He's catching balls. He'll be ready to go. Oakland's ready to go two and fourteen as always. <laughs> You really think they're going to be that bad? They're a mess. They're terrible. Yeah, they're not going to be good. I mean, <laughs> they they might be slightly better than the Giants, but not by much. That is just a dumpster uh, fire in Oakland. Yeah, it's a... I, I, I think they could go 7-9. and nine. Don't say it, Steve. <laughs> what, they're what, not going to be good. But what makes you say 7-9? and nine? Like, are you watching Hard Knocks? Because I watch it every year, Steve, and I drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, and this is the first can't. year I'm That's not drinking it. That's why I don't it. watch it. I'm going to watch it after all the <laughs> well, drafts they're also are done. 3-0 and they're also 3-0, and right? That doesn't mean anything. Like okay, Lucas said, the, the that, Lions I mean, went like 4-0 and and then 0-16. And the preseason <laughs> doesn't mean shit. You, you just... I, I know that, but it is, it is an indication of football playing. So I just wanted to know if he's going to be there. I'll go on a limb and say this. Steve, I'll go on a limb and say this. I would take Zeke over Antonio Brown 100% of the time, even if Antonio Brown is completely healthy and Zeke has to hold out for a quarter of the season for the sole reason of I don't think Antonio Brown is going to play the full season. I think he's going to do some dumb shit because they're going to start losing. He's a head case. He has a huge ego, and he's a cancer in a locker room, and he's just going to have a meltdown when they're losing 35-3. to and he's not getting the ball thrown his way, and, and some shit's going to go down where he's just either going to be suspended or he's just going to walk off. So I am I, I don't definitely not, that he would have more not drafting that I, guy. I, I, I don't think he's – but I, well, you, would, you, don't think he, you don't have him as a top five wide receiver? No. 
I don't want him. Yeah, I wouldn't take him. I don't want to deal with him. That's for you guys. You guys have him. I'll take someone else. Unless he falls past like th receiver, round three. You don't think Tony Brown's a top I five I think skill-wise, he is, but I don't want to take the chance on, on just his track record as a teammate. Because I don't think he's playing the full season in Oakland. Yeah, I don't walk when I'm walking out of my championship game. What was it week 17? He just didn't yeah. show up. That if, would be your yeah, championship if he game. Had, if, you're... if he had played and they had won, they would have made the playoffs. But he was too much of a head case to get out on the field and actually just, just play. So the Steelers lose. I know. I, the thought, but I, I think mean, that was crazy. A, that's a lot of shit. That was just there was a lot of shit that happened in Pittsburgh. I don't think this guy is going to give up on a brand new team in a brand new city. Uh, we'll I, see. You know, I mean, he look, they also, could go 0-10. And, yeah, you know, exactly. He's never, and, he's never been I, part I of a losing I think, team. I, I'm not saying they're going to they're gonna win the division, but oh, they don't have know, a the Chargers are division. way better than they are. The Chargers are way better. The Chiefs. Yeah, the Broncos aren't the going to be half bad, better. probably. The Broncos are going to be decent, though. Yeah. Somebody has to be at the so division, maybe bitch. Six wins, six and ten, seven and nine, somewhere around that. But I don't think they're going to be a garbage team. I don't think they're going to win two games. No, I think they win more than that. I you, think you know, you, max they win four. You know what worries me, Steve? Though, is though watching Hard Knocks, it's like John Gruden is just making excuses for Antonio Brown. Like Gruden, ten years mm -hmm. ago, when he was a real football coach, when he cut Keyshawn and all that, he would not put up with that crap. Now he's just like part of the circus. Well, he needs them, dude. He needs them. And he realizes that. The talent is, I mean, Antonio Brown is better than Keyshawn Johnson. 100%. Ever He's an insanely yeah. talented wide receiver. Maybe the best. Yeah. Who would you rather and have? you yeah. got a quarterback that likes to throw that deep ball, and, you know, who's got to go out and get, and get it better than him? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, look, you know, I, I think he's, I don't know. He's invaluable to the team, but he's definitely a, a big, big addition. And so they wanted. They're going to try to until they, until they, they're going to try to make him happy, so that when he goes out there and performs, he'll feel you know they give him all the tools he he needs for success right away. And then if he's out there and not performing, and then sort of gets the attitude and then starts to blame other people, well, I think you'd see John Gruden's, uh, you know. His, uh, his demeanor change, or you know, the way he handles and change. But up till now, you, you have that honeymoon sort of phase where you're like, you know, I know you're great. I know that you're so talented. I know, I love you. And then, and and he's saying to them, like, look, I know I was in a bad situation. I know I didn't act correct. I didn't leave correctly. I I had a bit of a you know uh, a, you know a bad time in Pittsburgh. But I'm still really good, and I want you guys to believe in me. I love you, too. So you're in that honeymoon phase right now. Mm -hmm. You're in that phase where it's like it, it, they're just enamored with each other. And like you said, it could deteriorate. It probably will. But, you know, right now, that, that makes sense to me, the way they're treating each other. I love that about But it. I just want to make sure he's going to fucking play. You wonder what? I, I, just want him to, I just want to know if he's going to play. Yeah, he'll play. He's He'll going be, to play. Yeah. yeah. I would still yeah. take Zeke over him, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to run because i got to go into a dinner thing for my dad. But uh, we're, gonna, we're all set for next week, correct? Yeah, we're all set. So, again, uh, all right, if you got an invite, make sure you reply to it and Everybody you need to be available. Patience, yeah. For 4.15 p.m. Pacific time is going to be the draft next Wednesday. Um, and if you uh, didn't get an invite, I'm sorry. And next year we'll just shake it up so we'll have different people in the league to try to get to you all because there were a lot of people that reached out, and we appreciate it. Um, but obviously there's only so many that we can fit in one league. Yeah. Uh, so can I ask? Let's yes. just let's let's shoot ahead one week from right now, okay? okay? One week from right now. Yes. We're in the fucking studio. We're about to do the draft, and Ezekiel Elliott has not signed a contract yet, right? Yes. You get the fifth pick. Are you taking Ezekiel Elliott? One hundred percent. Yes. I'm saying that again. Yeah, I if I have the fourth pick, Steve, if I have the fourth pick, I'm taking him. I can't wait. Whether to see. he's I can't signed wait or not, week. ladies and gentlemen. We will send that a time that this thing's happening next week. Uh, I want everyone to tune in to watch Brenton shit the bed. I really do. I'm I not really, going to really shit do. the bed. I think you're going to be very surprised at uh, how good I am, how smart I am. 
Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you're not smart and you're not good at it, but I think you're making a big mistake. No, here. no, no, no. And no, I no. think you're, you're doing. You didn't learn. You didn't learn from Le'Veon Bell last year, and I just hope it doesn't bite you because a lot of people have written me. A lot of people uh, on Cameo that I'm doing the cameos for these people that have fantasy football leagues now. They want me to do cameos, and one out of every three, it's like. Hey, this guy was the sack last year, and say fuck Le'Veon Bell. He took him in the first round. A lot of them are saying that. A lot of people got burnt, and you want to put your hand on the fire again. But the difference is Zeke. The way his contract is, he can't sit out all sixteen games. There's a point where he has to come back in, otherwise he's just completely fucking himself. Le'Veon Bell, after he got franchise tagged a second time, could sit out and and go somewhere else and get his max money, which he did. So he lost a little bit of money not playing. About, but I do remember that we, that Ezekiel had to come back by week eight. So now another question. You want Ezekiel Elliott for first-round draft pick value for yes. week eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, yes. 14, 15, 16. I want 16. him while I make a run for the playoffs, and then I want him in the championship. Absolutely. Wow. All right. Good luck, buddy. Um, Lucas, thanks for copping in for me again today, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. If I get the sixth pick in the fantasy draft, I'm taking Daniel Jones with it. The sixth pick. Yeah. motherfucker. Everyone wants, to, uh, everyone wants to fucking <laughs> shit on me while I'm down. I can't wait to get back there, guys. Um, I'll oh, see you next God. week, Lucas. I'll be in the studio. I Hopefully you'll be there as well. Um, and then, uh, and uh, thanks, guys. I'll talk to you guys next week. You got it, brother. Safe see travels. Bye. I, lo- I love that about Antonio Brown, though. Like, because he's a six-round pick, so he has that psycho work ethic. Yeah. But he's also a psycho in real life, too. Yeah, I, I that's just that's why I don't want to touch him. Now, where were now when you heard the Andrew Luck news? Were you shocked? Not really. You weren't? No. I mean, he's been hurt. Uh, he was sitting out. He was resting, and then they were saying, "Oh, it might be getting better." But then it was like, "Oh, it's not getting better." So now we don't know when he's coming back. So it makes sense. Yeah, it's crazy though. Lingering injuries. You just. You know, teams have to get better at dealing with that. You know, the Spurs and Kawhi Leonard, mm-hmm. that that's why they broke up. Yeah. He's the best player in the basketball. But, I mean, how do you think they handled Peyton Manning when they got rid of him? I mean, the guy broke his back, and they just were kind of like, okay, fuck it. And then he goes on to win a Super Bowl. Damn right. He didn't even play that well, and he wins. Exactly. But he didn't need to play. He just needed to play well enough. Yeah. He was on a team that was built around a defense, and he just had to not make mistakes, and he didn't make mistakes, and they won a Super Bowl. That's true, but these coaches dealing with these players, like Steve said, RG3. Mm-hmm. Such a great rookie year. Looked like he's going to transcend the game, and then Mike Shanahan played, kept him in a little too long. Yeah. Same draft, too. Mm-hmm. Damn. I'm happy for him. I am if, too. If he was a Bills player, I, I'd be pissed. Be thinking I would burn his jersey. I don't think I'd burn a jersey. I've never. <laughs> I don't get burning the jersey. Oh yeah. I don't understand that. I don't know. I think it's a new thing. I think LeBron. I, the first big jersey burn I remember was LeBron when he left Cleveland, and then years later he came back. Yeah, and they all had to rebuy the jerseys. You just gave him <laughs> the money twice. You dumb idiots. Just stick it deep in your closet and. And forget about it for a while. And then 30 years from now, it's going to be cool to wear luck jerseys to Colt games. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be retro. Yeah. So don't burn your jerseys. Don't be stupid. Um, Steve didn't stay on. I wanted to get to college football. I wanted to make some bets with him. Well, let's so, make bets right now. Do you know who Michigan opens with? Uh, I'm looking at the full schedule. So we've got... Um, uh, Florida A&M and UF, UCF are playing tomorrow, as well as Georgia Tech at number one Clemson. Um, we've got Florida Atlantic is at Ohio State. Wisconsin is at South Florida. Um, I mean, there aren't really that Florida. The Florida Miami game is probably the only decent Week One game. It's week three when the when the season really begins, yeah, right? Um, we're playing uh, Michigan's playing Middle Tennessee State. All right. So, I mean, how you remember the Appalachia State game? I'm sure. Yeah, of course. That was an unforgettable moment. Yeah, um, Iowa is playing Miami of Ohio. All right. My so. very first game going to as a University of Iowa student was against Miami of Ohio, and Ben Roethlisberger was the quarterback for Miami, and he looked like crap. He threw four picks against the Hawkeyes, got 
brutally mur- just destroyed. Mm-hmm. And then that was the last game he lost before like the playoffs his rookie season. I remember like he went just on a hot streak. Even as a Pittsburgh starting quarterback, he was like he started undefeated the first half season. Yeah, I mean looking at this this week one, other than the the Miami and Florida game, I really don't see any game that might be competitive. Um, maybe uh, you've got number 11, Oregon, at number 16, Auburn. That might be the only game okay. worth watching this weekend. Okay. Um, Oregon's quarterback, Justin Herbert, projected first-round pick. But, I mean, I just they're all shit games. They are, but I don't know. I wonder if the Colts are going to get Trevor Lawrence in two years. Maybe. He's Yeah. I mean, they need a quarterback now. They always get Jacoby Hall of Famers, Brissett man. will be decent, but I think it, it kills T.Y. Hilton's value. I think it probably bumps up Marlon Mack and, and Eric Ebron a little bit. But uh, You think Ebron gets pumped up from that? Yeah. Why? He's, he's going to check down a lot. Okay, yeah. And uh, and I think they have pretty good chemistry. It's um, weird, though. Luck told Hilton and a couple other players that he was retiring like a few days before Schefter even broke it. Mm. I couldn't imagine being a player like that and finding that out and just keeping it to yourself. It's got to be tough. Because you look at T.Y. Hilton's numbers with and without luck, and it's, like, drastically different. Jesus, yeah. It's the difference between, like, a late first-round pick and, like, a fourth or fifth-round pick. I think they came um, in the league the same year, too. Yeah. So we've got, uh, according to Odd Shark, the Oregon-Auburn game, um, they're predicting Auburn by three and a half, and the total points will be 57. Damn. Damn. How does Vegas always get it, like, spot on the nose, too? Uh, they know what they're doing. They really do. Because, yeah, I would probably take, I don't know if I'd take the over or under on 57. I would take the over. Yeah. I'm going to take the over. Did you see the Raiders played a uh, preseason game against the Packers in Canada? And the field was I like. I heard the field was shit. Yeah, it was like 80 I had yards long. Watched, again, <laughs> not going to watch Hard Knocks until after the draft so I don't get influenced by Oakland Raider players because I don't think there are any that I want unless it's really late in the draft. But I'm looking forward to watching that oh, episode you're gonna and love seeing it. how shitty the field is. You're going to love all of it, man. I mean, it's I, similar to what they did in, in Mexico a few years ago. What? When the they, field conditions that's right. were just. Did they like, cancel the game. Yeah, how can you not figure that out before? You know you're going to yeah. do it. Yeah. You're spending all this money. You know how much money is going into it, how much you're going to make. Just get in there and, and it's this simp- it's like comedy. Just have a microphone and a stool. That's all you need. Yeah. We have to cancel the game. We the forgot field. the mic. Yeah. Figure out the field. Um I think I'm going to take uh Oregon on the road. Think, okay. And I'm going to take the over. Does that mean I have to take Auburn? No, you can take whoever you want. You're going to take the over. I'm going to take the under and I will take Auburn. Okay. SEC all the way, baby. SEC is always better than the Pac-10. Pac-10 is crap to me compared to the Big Ten and the uh, SEC. I like I like Oregon this year. I think they look I good. I would too. They got that Nike money. But yeah, all the other games are shit. I really don't think I'm going to watch anything else. And all the preseason games are tomorrow. Yeah. And then the first NFL game is Packers-Bears, I think, next Thursday. Mm. Crazy. It's all coming back. People are talking about Josh Allen in the comments. What are they saying? Uh, about our quarterback, Josh Allen, or yeah, the defensive? Don't, don't shit on Josh Allen, bro. Yeah, why are they crapping on Josh Allen? You can Josh get, Allen's going to win us a Super Bowl. He is going to. Here's a, Josh Allen will be a top five fantasy quarterback this year. Granted, he stays Honestly, healthy. He might be. He he runs a ton. Yeah, and we have good running backs, so they could run kind of a wildcat hybrid. And a lot of misdirection. I mean, he's not going to throw for shit. He doesn't really have anyone to throw to, so it's it's all going to be like dump offs to Cole Beasley, and and maybe Zay Jones has a decent year, but it's not like we have a tight end. It's not like we have a guy who's a deep threat. It's not like we have a big guy to throw to, so he's going to have to run. But I mean, Singletary is exciting. Uh, shady is still somewhat shady. So Frank Gore. Yeah, we got Frank still Gore. At it. Still just like the, he's the fucking... He's a Hall of Famer, man. He's a top five running back of all, like, yards-wise. He's the juggernaut of football. Just give him the ball, and he's going to run over people forever. Jeez, I'm very excited about this Bill season. Yeah. 
Well, are you gonna have this new house ready to go for? Yeah, yeah, it'll be ready. Week yeah. one, moving in tomorrow. So can't wait to be done with that. It's been a lot of lot of work. If you're gonna buy a house, don't also have two full time jobs and don't take any time off. No, and Steve said you're gonna shit the bed. I'm like, you just got a new one. Yeah, just the got a new brand king new size one. bed. Yeah, Cal King. Cal King, baby. Is a Cal King bigger than a regular King? Uh, the only difference is Cal King is a little bit wider and a regular King's a little bit longer. And since we're two tiny people, we, we want the you width. You want the width. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever had a bed in my entire life where my feet have gone over the edge. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I've had. Going back to even like the tiny childhood bed. I've wow. never been, <laughs> I've never my been My feet enough. hang off of the end of most beds. <laughs> I'm too tall for most beds and I'm not even that tall. Oh, well, like when you first came to LA too, what were you sleeping on? Like an air mattress. Okay. No, you? I had a I had a bed in no, Boston I, I, that I shipped. I bought a uh I bought a queen when I moved out here. Oh, you did? Yeah. You've grown up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I it, with a bed my, frame and everything? Yeah. Yeah, I shipped I mean, my queen a, from Boston. It was like a forty dollar like metal frame, but mm, I had a frame worked. for it. Dang, I slept on a twin size. I was way bigger than yeah, it. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, I, that's insane. I'm a big man. <laughs> I look very odd. But I go home and it, it still feels nice, my twin bed. Yeah. Feels I, safe. Yeah. But I fit, I, it, like, it's probably the size of this table, and I don't, I'm not the length of this table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does suck, like, hanging off a bed. And then, like, Emma, have you ever fallen out of bed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I fell out of my dorm bed a bunch in college because I wasn't used to it being so fucking narrow because I had had like a full bed at my parents' house and then I moved into a dorm and it was so narrow and I kept rolling and I had it lifted so I could put all my shit underneath it. I yeah, fell out it was of that a bunk thing. bed? Yeah, kind of. There wasn't anybody underneath me. But your but it, stuff was. But like all my stuff was, yeah. yeah. And I would I would roll my ass off that bed pretty regularly. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's a pretty rude awakening. Jesus. Good morning. Yeah, it's Dang. one way to wake yourself up. Now, how do you feel about Michigan season coming up? Uh, we'll wait and see. Yeah. Because, I mean, the trend has been they look great for 10 weeks and then, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not as excited about college football as I am about. Do you like Harbaugh, though? Yeah, I love him. I love Harbaugh, too. I but there's something great. about him that makes football players retire. Yeah, but there's also something about him that, that makes players want to come play for him. So he's finally in a place where Michigan, all the starters are going to be people that he recruited. He's not getting the last guy's, you know, scraps. And yeah. so, I mean, this is a telling year. If, if they don't dominate this year, then I don't think he's going to last much longer. I hope he does because I hate Ohio State. Well, he'll go somewhere else. And I think this is the year they finally beat Ohio State. But, he, I mean, he pretty much has to. Yeah. I bet you if he, uh, mark my words right now, if he loses to Ohio State, he probably doesn't have a job within 30 minutes of that game ending. Would you rather have them lose all their games except Ohio State or win all their games except Ohio State? Honestly, I'd rather have them lose all their games and I beat Ohio too. State. I would too. Fuck Ohio State. I hate them. So do I. <laughs> They wanted to trademark the the in front of their name. Yeah. So they could just go by the Ohio State University. What a bunch of morons. You get to do that. Yeah. What's that school ever produced besides athletes? Not much. I mean, honestly, if you're a resident in the state of Ohio, I'm pretty sure that you're just automatically allowed to, to you're in. Yeah, that's how Iowa is. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> so, in the, if you're in the top 50%, you can get into any Iowa public university. Yeah. So the expectations there are not not super high. <laughs> but damn it, they can play football. Yeah, they can. But yeah, okay, so what we need for next week is I'm going to get a draft board. We're going to have to get somebody that can put stickers up for us. Oh, and you're you're not doing straight online? I guess we could do straight is online. Is there a way to put it on the TV? Um... Yeah, if Steve's honestly, yeah, if Steve's not yeah, calling if, in, I'll just use this. If people aren't calling in, you can just yeah. That is a good call. Yeah, just put it because it would does the online one automatically update as people draft. Yeah, it'll automatically update if we put them in. Yeah, and then Aaron can cut to it too. Awesome. Um, so we have that taken care of. Is it ESPN or Yahoo? We're doing Yahoo. Good. I remember that argument. Yeah, we're not doing ESPN. This is a young man's league. 
Okay, we're not we're not doing Grandpa's League. I love it. My friend Dave is like, what do you say? ESPN is the MySpace of fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> the only downside of Yahoo is the constant Snickers ad that's at the top of the page. But I mean, you get used to it. Yeah, you just have Snickers here. Exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. We have to figure out the draft order. So um, I think once all the teams are confirmed, I'll just find a random generator. And uh, we'll do it that way. Question, where do you like to draft? I want to be either in the first three or the bottom three. I don't want to be in the middle. The middle in a snake draft is not, it's just a nightmare because everybody you really want goes first. Everybody that has value goes on the other side of you and you're just kind of stuck with whatever's in between. Yeah, and I kind of like being at one of the ends too because if you need to like... You can boom, boom, right? Away. I, yeah, I love that. yeah. And then, but you also have to overdraft some people because you won't be you won't have a pick for twenty. Yeah, but picks. that's okay. Yeah, I kind of agree. Linklater saying six is best this year. Well, you can pick sixth. I don't want to pick sixth. I preferably would want to pick third. Third? Yeah. Yeah, third's a good place to be. You don't have to um, choose between McCaffrey. Zeke I and... think I want to. I, I want to be. Honestly, I like drafting at the back end. Because I think uh, people like Steve, they go, oh, Zeke's not going to play. Let's let him fall. And now all of a sudden I've got Zeke and I've got Le'Veon Bell because I had the 11th pick and yeah. they both fell that way. Yeah. It's crazy not to take Zeke because you think he won't play. He's going to play. Like you said, he's too much he money. He has to. He, le- he, based on his contract, because he's not at the end of his contract like Le'Veon Bell was, he has to play by like week six or week eight. Otherwise, he loses everything. And so he's going to come back, whether he's getting paid what he wants or not. So then the game becomes, okay, now my season, if I take Zeke, is these eight games, how many of these eight games can I win without Zeke? And I should be able to win at least four of them. If I'm a if I'm a decent player, I should at least go 500. And now I get this guy back who hasn't played all year, and he's fresh, and he's in great shape, and he's going to instantly boost my team 30 to 40 points a game. I'm going to fucking run the table. Yeah, plus if Dallas doesn't have him the first few weeks, they're probably going to lose, so they're going to be playing for something in week 17. They're going to want him back. He's going to get paid. The season you had him, you said it was the season he was suspended. Right? Yeah. So I had him for the first, like, what was it, 10 games of the season, then he got suspended the last six games. I was dominating that whole season. I remember I remember going to your place, and it was still like a week-to-week thing because didn't he get it appealed? He appealed and it, then... and then they were like, okay, yeah, you can keep playing. And then he appealed it again when they were like, well, this might be happening. And uh, and eventually he stopped appealing it, right? Yeah. And they like all serve it after like. Week but isn't eight. it weird? He gets suspended, and then Tyreek Hill has all this stuff go down, and he's not missing a game. Oh, it's ridiculous! I mean, that's the a double standards such a in double the league. Standard. Roger Goodell and just picking and choosing who he wants to punish. Dude, one of my favorite things about the NFL is how disliked Roger Goodell is. He sucks. <laughs> you watch the draft. Anybody who I- thinks he deserves a private jet for the rest of his life just to handle an organization is yeah. out of their fucking mind. He's getting paid so much money. They want these players to play 18 game seasons and they're retiring. No. Just Insane. just do just do 16 games and do two preseason games and you know, that way the starters don't need to play at all in the preseason and if they do you just have them play like a couple of uh you know, series and and just everybody else look at everybody else and maybe you just do the pr- two preseason games and you do like the dual practices where they can still kind of scrimmage but it's not like a, a serious thing and, and get a good look at everybody they don't need four preseason games and they certainly don't need to do 18 regular season games because that's way too fucking much football what do you think about the idea that's been broached in the last year about expanding the playoff teams from six to eight i mean i think if if you're going to get rid of two preseason games but you also want to add on to regular season. I don't think that's going to happen because neither side, the owners aren't going to want to lose the money from, from losing two preseason games, but the players are not going to want to have to play two more regular season games. So they're never going to agree on that. But I think if you were to expand the teams that make the playoffs and make it two weeks longer, then you might have a solution. You give a couple of more, you know, you know, buys in the playoffs and, 
you might be able to find a happy medium and there's going to be more money in a playoff game than a preseason game. Yeah. So I, I think that would be the route that they go. Maybe they add enough that it adds one more week on. So instead of getting 18 regular season games, you still have 16, but then you have, uh, how long are the playoffs? Like a month? Yeah. About so they go five weeks instead. Yeah. And I think it's a good compromise. They'd probably get more money from that one extra week of playoff football than they would from two full weeks of preseason across the board. And way more interest. More people are going to tune into that than... Yeah. I mean, I've watched maybe an hour of three Bills preseason games. I don't care that much. I just watched the clip. I mean, preseason is perfect for... Show me the box score. I, I just want to see the, the clips who, on Twitter. Who got the snaps? I just yeah. need to see the numbers. Who yeah. are, who are they? Because that's telling, too, uh, when we draft. And Steve, he was on a television show where he pretended to be good at fantasy football. Okay, he's not. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Because <laughs> he's not looking at which offenses are run first, which ones are pass first, and then picking players based off opportunity. He's not looking at guys like, like Singletary, I think, only has maybe one or two carries so mm -hmm. far in the preseason. That tells you something. Mm-hmm. That tells you that he's probably going to be the guy. If you're taking him, if you're taking a Bills running back, it's probably going to be him. So you, you, think, you think Singletary is going to start get more snaps than McCoy and and I mean, Gore? the way that they're working him in the preseason tells me that he's going to get a lot of work. Because well, he was a third round pick. They would they would give him a lot more if they just wanted to look at him. The fact that they're not giving him any work at all means that they already know what they wanted to know. That's interesting. So they're probably going to use him. Shady is on the wrong side of 27, and 27 is when the players really start to decline. Frank Gore is 105 years old. They drafted him for a reason. Frank, Yeah, but I love Frank. Frank Gore. I love Frank Gore, too. His he's, career he's is gonna insane. He's going to be good for what he does. He'll fill in when we need him, and, and you yeah. know he'll make the Bills competitive. Oh, I'm excited. So, oh, my, my little brother just said that. I, I never watched the league. Yeah. Don't tell Steve that. Yeah. But he said that his wife used to run his team on the show. So, I think. Yes, so. she did. That was a huge running joke. Ah, well, there Until you she go. joins the league. There you go. I think Steve told me, too, that they had a fantasy draft on the first season and that the, the woman who played his wife, Kate An Anselton, or something like that, she won the league that they ran. See, Emma? Yes. Yeah. There is hope for you. Oh, yeah. So oh, you, I'm ready. I'm not even going to pick my own team. I'm just going to fuck around and see what happens. Well, I didn't pick my own team last year in the Comedy Store League, and I still did pretty well. Hell yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. I'm also like so ready to just fucking bomb and lose the whole thing. I'm like ready for all of the above. Oh, and we got to figure out. So uh, we're not doing a buy-in, you guys, because um, I don't want to have to try to collect money from people all over the country. But we are going to do some kind of a trophy. So somebody's going to win a trophy. And maybe we'll figure something else out, too. So and if for you guys the loser. have any recommendations, yeah, well, we need to figure out something for the winner and something for the loser. Um, but it it won't be cash. Could we ship the loser like a, uh, I was going to say a dead rat, but maybe like We could all coal. shit in a bag and send it to him. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any fantasy football rules that like you stick by? Mm -mm. You don't? No. There are certain things like don't draft. I wish, and Bill Simmons talks about this, I wish you could just draft a team's running game. So instead of taking like Sonny Michelle from the Patriots, you know, because Belichick is such a frustrating no, coach. No, that's not as fun though. I know it isn't. That eliminates so much strategy. So You're no, right. I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to do that. That's fun if, let's say we were playing like in a four team league, then that would make sense that you're just drafting full teams and then starting whatever players you think are going to like that I could get behind, but a 12 team competitive league with deep players. No, I want to steal your handcuff. I want to pick guys up off the waiver wire before you realize that they're valuable. And, and I want to dominate that way. And you need to figure out what Belichick's going to do, what his scheme is and who's getting the touches. And since it's a full point PPR, Sony Michelle might be valuable for the run game. He might be more valuable in standard, but then James White is the guy that's catching, you know, four or five passes out of the backfield and scoring a touchdown here or there and, and getting like 40, 50 yards. Kurt, Curtis, the comedy store manager, texted me yesterday afternoon this, uh, this thing from Instagram showing Zeke Elliott was traded to Oakland. And I guess for a few minutes, people were buying it. <laughs> It was some account like NFL memes or something, yeah. but it showed like Zeke in a Raiders jersey and people were buying, and he thought it was real for a second too. I'm like, there's no way Oakland just 
they're not that smart. Yeah, what what would Oakland have to give up to get Zeke? I don't think they have anything else that they could honestly get rid of. Yeah. Because they already spent everything to get Antonio Brown. and. Would you rather have Amari Cooper or Antonio Brown? See, that's tough because Amari Cooper is hurt right now. Oh, he is? He's got uh, he's got a foot problem. He's got a foot problem, and it's one of those lingering foot problems where he said he's played with it before. He played with it his rookie year and still had a thousand yards. So it depends on how much pain he's in. But um, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about a head case versus a foot case, because Amari, <laughs> if he's in a lot of pain, he's not going to play as well. Antonio Brown will probably still have four or five, maybe more big games and when i say big games i meant like two three touchdowns like 30 40 points in fantasy like he's going to dominate i just don't think he's going to play the whole year and i don't want to deal with that headache especially with a first round pick yeah zeke is different because i know in my heart doesn't matter when he comes back i will have him for the playoffs i will have him for that postseason whereas antonio brown i have no idea if he's going to be around week 16 yeah um, so between those two guys, I would probably still go Amari Cooper just because he's saying he feels fine and he's going to play. And I like Dallas's offense a hell of a lot more than I like Oakland's. So I, I wouldn't take either in the first round, but if Amari Cooper fell, I would take him later on. Cause that really worries me though. Up. Any receiver with a foot problem, Sammy Watkins dealt with them for years. Yeah. It's the kind of thing where I think, um, the uh, like cartilage has been damaged, so it's bone on bone type of thing. Eight one three. Hello, you're on. What's the odds? What's up, Rhett? It's Rhett. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. What's up, Rhett? Nothing much. I'm actually, I'm not a rep from Fort Wayne. Or I'm not rep from Wichita anymore. I'm rep from Fort Wayne. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. So you're right in the heart of uh, people being upset about Andrew Luck. <laughs> yeah, r- right in it for sure. How's the mood in Fort Wayne? Is uh, it pretty I mean, I haven't noticed it too much. I mean, there's not really, I, I was actually back in Florida this past weekend going to that first Gator game. Okay. Have you seen a Colts fan cry yet? Not yet. Okay. I actually did. I fa- when I was with my brother, we FaceTimed one of his friends. He was on the verge of tears Saturday night when we were uh, all happy about the win, and he was just losing his franchise. Yeah. I mean, I, I like Brenton said, if it was a bill, I would be pissed. But he's not, so let him take care of his body, his family. I mean, I would get over it. I would, Even too. if he was a bill. Because I, I don't have the expectations. I th- it's, it's tough, but I, yeah, mean, the, I don't know. The Colts were a you legitimate hate to see someone contender. go right in their prime. Yeah, and, and the Colts are a legitimate contender, whereas I know the Bills aren't. I joke that they are, but I don't think, honestly, they aren't. I think they're an 8-8 eight and eight contender this year. Yeah, they're, they're going to be middle of the road, <laughs> 500, as long as I make my over bet. I made that. Uh, oh, the Colts, Colts they drop immediately. S- I made I made two Vegas future bets. I bet that the Bills will win seven games or more, and I bet that the Dolphins will win five games or more. You can bet that in Vegas. Oh yeah, you can bet on anything. <laughs> That's awesome. So so what were you doing in Florida, Brett? Now he was in which? Uh, I was back at the uh, the Gator game. Oh, you went to the Gator game. That first college football game of the season, yeah. I, I graduated from UF back in December. Okay. Nice. How'd they look? Uh, at times, they looked great. I think we had 10 or 11 sacks, and we also had four turnovers, so it was... A lot of Tebow jerseys in the crowd? And he's out. That is that Fort Wayne, Indiana <laughs> cell service. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been there with Pauly. Fort Wayne is... Uh, it's not good. It's not the best mm-hmm. i wouldn't want to live there it was nice to come through and do a couple of shows and then get out yeah um it's it's you know your standard midwest yeah semi big but little city um not a whole lot to do i got to moderate paulie's one man show on sunday how was that it was fascinating mm-hmm. it really was that guy has stories for days i mean he had a hell of a upbringing god hell of an upbringing hell of a childhood and uh, he's seen everything. He's interacted with everybody. 
Yeah. So he was talking about like playing little league with Bob Dylan's kid, and like Bob Dylan went to every one of his kids' little league games. Good for him. I know. Would never guess that Bob Dylan was always working. Yeah. Frick. He's still working. Still, yeah. He ain't dead yet. Nope. I had to. I had an argument with a friend. Is do you know if Roger Staubach's still dead? If is he alive? The old Cowboys quarterback. Um, I believe so. Okay. Because I went to Cowboys camp a couple weeks ago, and everybody there was wearing Zeke Elliott jerseys. <laughs> but there was one old guy in a Roger Staubach jersey, and I wanted to make a joke about it, but I'm like, I don't know if he's... Uh, let's see. It's very bizarre seeing these young NFL players retire, though, because they see the effects of CTE. Yeah, he's still he's, alive. He is still alive? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I can't do the joke then. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, they are far more advanced with, with their studies on CTE than they were 10 years ago. Yeah. And these players now with the, the new contracts where it's guaranteed money, they're making, you know, you basically just want to get that second contract and you're all set. And once you get that second contract and you get your guaranteed money, it's like fucking walk away. Right, right. You've won. You maybe didn't win a Super Bowl, but you won. You got your money. You still have your health. You have your youth. You're not even 30 yet. And mm -hmm. you've got half, you know, $50 million or whatever. Like, absolutely, I would walk away. And there's so many things you can do with your life, and they're seeing it. Yeah, well, Rob Gronkowski, you know, that interview where he said after the Super Bowl, he was literally laying in his bed crying because he was in so much pain. You saw that too? Yeah. Yeah. So, and now that he's out of football and he's using CBD oil, which is banned by the NFL, he's completely pain-free. So, I mean, these guys, they only have to hear it from so many other players that it's like, yeah, this isn't worth it. How soon till you think players can smoke pot? Um, five years? I would say within five years, yeah. How soon till you think the rest of the country can smoke pot? Two years? It depends on, depends on the, the state. <laughs> It really, I, but I, I, I just see all some this. states where it's going to take a really long time. But yeah. I mean, how many are now recreational? A lot. You got Oregon, California, Colorado. Yeah. So, and a lot of states like are medicinal. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time to where the majority are going to be. Yeah, it's fine. I was in Connecticut last month and we went to Massachusetts the last day and we stopped by, I we didn't go in, but we ate by a, a weed store and the line outside was. 40 deep at I've Sunday heard that the lines at those dispensaries are yeah. insane. They're crazy. But apparently you can call ahead and tell them what you want and you just pick it up. Mike's looking at you through the... <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you can ask Mike if you want. Did you watch Hard Knocks yet? Yeah. Well, no, not this week. So okay. Not this week. Okay. Steve called in and was asking if Brown's going to play. And like the first five minutes of Hard Knocks... In game one? Yeah. I hope so. If he finds the right helmet and some shoes that fit him, you he'll, know. He'll play. He's going to play. Right? It's still the helmet issue. Yeah, but the first five minutes of this latest episode this is all I've seen. But he's catching footballs from one of those machines with one hand, yeah. and then he takes off his new helmet and complains how tight it is. But he's got one. His sack up. Everybody else in the league is wearing it. Seriously. Fuck. You guys on the air right now? Uh, we are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we should wrap it up. Um, so we're going to wrap it up next week is the draft 415 yeah. Pacific time Yahoo. So if you are in the league, you need to be available. Otherwise we're going to auto pick and you're not going to be happy with the results. And if you can't be available next week, then let us know. Cause there are other people that do want in and it's uh, not a big deal if you back out now. So, uh, we'll be back. Steve will be in the studio. Emma's going to go on the road. So have fun out there, Emma. Thank you. Um, I'll be back in two weeks. Go see the Doughboys live. I think we still have tickets available for the, the second show in Boston and maybe the second show in D.C. There you go. And uh, ATC will be doing another stand-up show on September 5th at the Laugh Factory at 8 o'clock. So those tickets are on sale now. Go get them. Hell yeah. So much comedy happening. Yes. Damn right. Did you get a new theme song? Uh, I might be using an old one. Okay. I don't know. I think I it was just, different last week. I pulled up a file. I think this is the old one, but I think they both work. Yeah, they both work. Steve's still very smart. 
Uh, so Maybe we, we should get a special one for the draft if anyone's got some ideas. Yeah, does anyone uh, with skill want to make us a theme song specifically for the draft? That'd be dope. So putting that out there, feel free to DM me, uh, send it to me, Steve, what's the odds? And uh, Lucas, do you have anything to plug? Um, Let me think. No. <laughs> right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Soccer. What the fuck? Dude, I can't take this lady on the thing. We can bet on that too. What's the odds? <laughs>